one other person. And I find that for me, because um, recently one of my neighbors, I just found her. She just almost exactly like I am. She likes Aww. to do keto. She likes to work out and everything. So we're keeping each other accountable. Aww. And I find that sometimes when you've tried other things, find one person that can help you, you that, you can, yeah, you that can hold you accountable, accountable or you can hold each other accountable mm. and that will help. I know Morales is struggling. Find somebody in, in my vicinity. Don't find yes. someone like me for Morales. No, 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 you know, and I'll do, I had an idea for you, because, but I'll share with you maybe off camera. You know, okay. it, just, it just occurred to me. I was like, oh, looking something American do. Mm. But yeah, well done. Yeah. I was going to lament. Let me see how much time I have left. Okay, I have one minute. Uh, your people, last month, today, hmm. I want, because I don't, I don't usually lament, but because they're your people, I know you can call I'm them, very, you can make I'm the calls. I'm with last month. Also, there's that, there's that place, um, it was Daystar, where we take the kids to school and all mm. that. And... Yes, the right thing is to go make a U-turn at Billings Way. That's the law. And we, I mean, for me, I've been doing that for a long time. But I then hear everybody that when the kids are, when doing rush hour for the kids school. are going to, you can let the kids pass through that school. junction. And suddenly I went there today and they didn't allow me. And I'm thinking, ah, Ross, people allow you to pass here every morning. The guys do not know me. And the guys say, no, man, I'm going to talk for Billings Way. And I saw that person passing right next to me. And I'm thinking, ah, is it because you know that person, you don't know me? So one, one other person that came to me and said, ah, oh, your view, let her pass. And the man was like, no, 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 she's not passing it. Let her go and put on a billing sweep. The point is that I would love to go and turn a billing sweep. But please make it the new law for uniform everyone. for everyone. All of us go and turn a billing sweep. Either that or you, you, you have a, that, let it be specific, that during rush hour school hours, mm -hmm. let the kids pass. Let's for be very the school, clear. Not for a person. So once they see the school uniform, for the yeah. school children. Yeah, yeah. but you know, like, let one, you know, allow one person pass and then stop. Yeah, that's, right. so that's the problem. You see the school uniform, the children oh, that you... Last man, you know me, I don't and complain. You know but please, today, okay. today I'm <laughs> complaining last about man, last man. Last man, with you people. Well, I, know, uh, hey, I know you're pleased with them, but <laughs> they're your people. Right so please tell them. Tell you, you know they're you know they our guy. Go and call them and tell them, please. They should make a law and let us know what it is. Okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. We're starting with the nation. DSS declares Igbo who wanted after arms recovery in home raid. Senate's house split on fund for host communities. Picture here of State Governor that for Abiodun um, commissioning the um, housing estate it's called Prince Court Estate in Abel Kuta. Federal government, we are going after IPOB leader Kano's backers. Lagos bound ISWAP chief arrested in Ogun. Okay, Let the major headline is headline. everywhere, so might yes. as well just take it off. Okay. So, um, Sunday Go is the, has been declared wanted by DSS. They said on Tuesday at 1 34, they went to his house and security operatives got to his house and they were attacked by um, Igbo's gunmen as well. So there was a gun battle between security operatives and Igbo's guards for about an hour. Um, two people were reported to have been, um, two men were reportedly killed, 13 have been arrested. They said they found arms, arms and ammunition in his, um, in his abode and he had escaped and he's been asked that he should turn himself in. Although this is in the sun, his response, that's when they go, confirmed that security operatives came to attack him in his home. He hadn't done anything as far as he's concerned. All the rallies and protests he's done have been peaceful. All he's trying to do is stand up for his people. And then he was attacked. He said one of his spiritualists was killed in, during the raid and the money was taken away, you know, and so many things. So the stories are the same, just that he, is, he has also called up the rally that was supposed to hold mm. in Lagos tomorrow. And okay. also, uh, other leaders in, within the Feniferi and also have also spoken out against it. Many mm. have said that if it was the DSS um, needing for him to come for questioning, they could have asked yeah. for a proper warrant or invited him for questioning. But the fact that it was a raid was totally wrong, and, um, and they dismissed it and said that it was very, very um, barbaric for the DSS to go in for that raid. Well, um, okay, another, yeah, go ahead, yes, Nima. A, so, a member of ISWAP was apprehended. His name is. Um, Ibrahim Musa, according to the military, he was apprehended in the Songwater area of Ogun State and he was bound for Lagos, according to them, to, you know, to acquire certain things for the ISWAP operation. ISWAP is the um, Islamic, Islamic State for West yes. Africa province. 
Africa. So this is um, good news. And along with the, that report, they recounted some wins that they've had up in the Northwest as well. And I hope that we do have proper prosecution and don't do a, a bandit swap or, you know, and the, the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Lajilai Mohammed, also said concerning the arrest of Kanu that there has been a treasure trove of information hmm. they've retrieved from his, info, from his um, phone and um, um, social media. And says, whilst the investigation is ongoing, we can assure Nigerians that none of the collaborators, irrespective of their high standing in society, will be spared. They will face the full wrath of the law. For their activities, I said, no matter how highly placed they are, that they're going to ensure that every one of them is brought to book. And he went to, uh, he had to remind us about 60 people lost their lives as a result of um, Kanu's um, instigation of violence across the southeast. Moving on now to the punch. We killed two, arrested 13 eight in the Boho's houseway, says DSS. Spiritual healing. Randy Prophet's bags life imprisonment for barren woman's death. Human parts. Traders exhuming on um, dope corpse selling in Oshun held. Kanu's arrest lawyers rights UK protest extradition. FG guns for collaborators. States drive away mining investors with illegal levies and taxes, says Oshimbajo. Debt servicing gulped 1.8 trillion naira in five months, says federal government. And AstraZeneca, Nigeria fought EU's rejection. This decision is political. Okay, which story are we taking? Let's start with the human interest story, Maria. Yeah, so a cleric prophet, Ola Kanye Oni, has been sentenced to life imprisonment over the death of um, a lady in 2017 who he led, you know, to his home, or his church, because he said that he could help her with her barrenness. And it was <coughs> reported that he, when she got there, he hypnotized her, he laid a white cloth on her, and he raped her, and then wiped her, you know, her private area with a white handkerchief, and then put potash in that area. Mm. And that, you know, led to her death. And so, um, finally, he has been um, sentenced to life imprisonment. Who are the, where where no. we seek all the spiritual help it's from. Which other story do you have? Uh, I'm trying to remember. The Senate drives away mining investors. That's a shame. Yes, so mm. the, pres the vice president, while uh, uh, you know, addressing, he talked about state uh, governors, uh, you know, <coughs> their bid to generate revenue, how they drive away mining uh, by using illegal, what he calls illegal um, fines to drive away miners. And, you know, encroach legal miners who have gotten their license to do mining in certain areas. According to him, he was uh, he says this jeopardizes investors, and they are drive uh, and the call for investors in the country. But for me, my worry is that we know that mining activities do not come without environmental impact. And as much as we'd love to generate revenue on the side of state and the federal government licensing these legal miners. We don't want to get to the state where South Africa is, and we know the Ministry of Environment should be more than empowered right now and be forced to carry out their duties. So if a mining activity is happening within any area, they should ensure that proper structure is in place for that, so that we don't have roads caving in, we don't have you know, um, uh, water getting polluted, we don't want the Niger Delta happening across yeah. Nigeria. So we need to have proper enforcement by our Ministry of Environment. That's where I would love the voice of the vice president to be loud. Okay, there's one more story. People who have been arrested for exhuming um, corpses and selling body parts. This thing has become, can you imagine, has become mainstream um, no business. business right now. Um, this, but these suspects were caught on Saturday. They were on a motorcycle. Luckily, this, uh, um, a police stopped them and then searched the sack that he was carrying. And mm. there were human parts. Mm. They were moving it from Ondo State to Oshun State. That's what they do. Anyway, um, police says they're investigating this matter. I mean, if you can exhume corpses, you will kill human beings, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand what this is about, where they yeah. sell it to, <clears throat> what they use it for exactly, and what sort of no, money they I would like to really from. invite a yes. spiritualist to come on our show. You explain to us, better. understand what they right. use the human parts for. Yeah, and friend, my let, let, let's find, because we, we, need, we need understanding. Why would you... They're always you? collecting human parts. Mm. How is it used? What exactly is it used for? And what are the... Um, how do we There's a story that worries me this uh, punch. 
I, I kind of lost my thoughts when you were taking headlines. I think sure. the New Republic detains in Nigeria. Benin Republic, yes, detains and uh, prosecutes Ogo State so, activists for challenging land so encroachment. According to this punch report, you know, people living in Yewa, not local government area of Ogo State, are, that's a border community between Nigeria and Ogo. So, this, uh, the police from Benin Republic coming to Nigeria in the market in the book, and, and, and they arrested this activist called Kunle Gab. And they arrested him for protesting against land encroachment between both states. This is a major matter of boundary, and it's not a matter for just a, any ordinary citizen. It is a federal government issue. I think, according to the report also, they said all the offices in, important have been, you know, minuted to the vice president's office has been written to, that of the governor of Ogo State has been written to, and the federal government should be on this. The attorney general should be on this. Whatever his um, staff are, should be, should be on this. This young man is now being prosecuted, and his lawyer is not giving access to him in Benin Republic. I don't know how Benin Republic police can cross the line and come and arrest a citizen in Nigeria without notifying the authorities. Mm. I think it's a matter All right, of, let's um, go on a quick break. Time. When we come back, we move on to other papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Up until a few years ago, Nigeria produced far less than it consumed, spending up to $22 billion annually on importation. Then came the import policy by the federal government. Now, to survive, the nation must learn to be self-sufficient. And so far, we are on the verge of achieving this through the intervention of the Central Bank of Nigeria and other stakeholders in support of local farmers and efforts of value chain entrepreneurs. Now, the goal of creating 10 million jobs in five years is gradually being actualized. Mission possible. Let's buy Nigerian to grow Nigeria. If now one thing we are need like, now store bonus, so make you no near me or my family. Because this golden month cereal where we they enjoy for breakfast, it contains iron and vitamin C, where they help boost our immunity. Golden morn, make every day amazing. Nestle, good food, good life. Mommy is ready to receive me a bundle of joy. Mommy is making my home cleaner and safer. We are dead all day. Illnesses can happen at home too. That's why Dettol and me together will make my baby's home safe and to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. That's why moms want to be Dettol. Dettol Sure. We are Dettol, Dettol Sure. Heartburn and indigestion? Try Just Eat. My recommendation for the past 26 years, Just Eat. Reliable remedy for heartburn, indigestion, flatulence, and acidity. Huh. Helen Paul! Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergent and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapix 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapix sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! Sensodyne Rapid Action Toothpaste. Sensodyne Rapid Action Toothpaste. Available in a big 100 gram tube and a small 25 gram tube.
Thanks for staying with us. We're moving on now to the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, let's find a story. We've not taken eight students killed, 962 others, eight teachers kidnapped in eight months, says Nans. Reps vote against suspension of Twitter ban. Makini appoints Emir of Katagum, Lautex's fifth chancellor. National Assembly passes PIB after 13 years. South South Senators kick over the 3% to host communities. FG projects 900 billion naira for fuel subsidy in 2022. Kano orchestrated killings of 60 persons, federal government alleges. Okay, let's take a story we've not taken. Okay, um, I have the um, Nigeria's education on edge. Okay. So um, this article is talking about how from December 1st, 2020 to June 17th, about 962 students have been kidnapped. Um, eight of them have died. Eight teachers involved. You know, schools in Kasina, Yobe, Kebi, Kaduna, Niger State have been shut down and all due to, um, to insecurity. And, it, you know, the article is just saying that it seems like there's an attack on education. And because of all that is happening, the insecurity around schools as well, um, there are so many dropouts. Enrollment for into schools have dropped you know, drastically. And this is going to affect us eventually. We understand how important education is. And so government needs to do better. UNICEF is also saying that the, the, um, how to solve the problem of insecurity in schools is not to shut down the schools, but to improve security within schools and around schools so that you can still keep the children in school as because education is so important. Mm -hmm. And that, so this conversation really is about how to make sure that um, the uh, education does not keep falling to the edge, as they say. Right. You know, we need to do mm -hmm. other things to protect the students, <clears throat> protect students, protect right. our education. Okay, PIB. Mm -hmm. So yes, finally, you Oh, we should be celebrating. In fact, we should be celebrating it. Yeah, but unfortunately, we cannot. So the PID has been passed by both houses, but then there's still the issue of the percentage for those communities that was being debated, and now the drama is around that one. You know, the Senate, had, some members of the Senate had voted for increasing the, the percentage for host communities from 2.5 to 5%, yeah. with some um, senators from the North rejecting it and saying, let's leave it at 3.5%, uh, based on what the Minister for State for Petroleum had advised that mm. this is enough for the host community so that other communities are not pushed us out of development because of this amount of money. But the senators from the south and those from the host communities are saying 5%, but why, we, why is it a problem to give 5%? And so mm. they voted yay or nay on the, floor, on the floor of the house. Even though yay was louder, the Senate president now and he's in his arbiter, arbiter position, forgot he was an arbiter, and picked the nay voices why are you saying he forgot? He forgot because well, you're supposed to be unbiased. That's what the well, you, And you should hear. You cannot you miss. Know? All of us are taking the side. You are not taking okay. the side. Okay, you're from the south. Yeah, hey, you're taking the side. And I cannot apologize. Okay, so. For 5% is not too much. Okay, for so, my hey, region. So, hey, no, yeah, hey, that's what you say. But so, based on the, based so, on the debate and, and the that compromise. We you can go back and play the Based on the compromise, they are saying. They're saying. He just said the compromise. of it. There Just like that. There was the compromise. 50% <laughs> was approved. But I think that they can continue the consultations and see if they can For still shift the ground. Now. So we're just at least those communities. But we are happy now. the PIB as was was, a, was passed, and that, that's a good thing because it means it's PIB. going to be that's going to be the starting of the regulation of the all sector. So tweaking it a bit now is is easier. Than when it wasn't we passed yeah, at all. At least now you can start from. And somewhere. let's just leave 5% and just. While let we are on this matter on. of oil. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take this story, but I, I, I am not happy that I'm taking this story. The federal government is saying that they'll be spending 900 billion naira by 2022 for subsidy. The subsidy that we all it. said that they removed, and then they said they have not removed. Anyway, they're already putting it in the budget for next year that they're going to spend 900, 900 billion. Now, the minister, I mean, she's saying exactly the same thing we've always been saying, that, listen, this is not sustainable. 900 billion is the kind of money that you should use for electricity, uh, infrastructure for schools, education, healthcare, and all that. But now, because labor resisted, she was very specific, they had to pay, pay that subsidy. Now, if they, if, my question therefore is that if the country falls apart, should we, should we blame labor? Because labor is the one that is not giving us, is not allowing the federal government to use this money for subsidy. 
for infrastructure development. Yes, they, Although Labour has been saying go and build refineries, they're saying whilst that is happening, so, we need to stop paying subsidy. All so governments how do we that give are and take? Anti people. So this subsidy payment, refining our oil outside the country is anti Nigeria. And all past governments who have voted or used this method failed this country. Um, let me just ask the Minister for Finance because she was still speaking that Nigeria is out of our 92.7% of our operated budget, the amount of 4.8 trillion naira tri uh, yes. was expended. And out of this amount, 1.8 was released for debt servicing alone. Yes, yeah. You know, 37% for infrastructure, 1.5% spent on personal costs. We see these things, and now you're still advising with the 1.8 we are using for the servicing of the debt. We have not paid back some of the debt. Yes, no. you are advising we should continue to take monies. No, she's not. Mm -hmm. This woman, this yes. minister for finance, yes. has always said we can borrow. Oh, yes. She has yes, never yes. gone back. She has oh, never yes. gone back yes, on we can borrow. Yes, yes. She's saying we should worry about revenue. I think she should now base her advice on us to borrow on how much we re our re revenue we generate. If we are not generating the money, there's no point borrowing the money. Let's not worry about it. So if we don't borrow the money, can you, would you then allow that Labour should leave them alone to get, get that money from subsidies? So they can use to do work. Because if, if you don't want us to borrow money, Labour should then leave them to stop paying subsidy. So they can sense. use the money one to do other the, things. One of the ways where... If Labour doesn't allow the them ways to borrow, that revenue, to borrow. One of the best ways that we can generate revenue in this country was how we became great in the first place. Agriculture. So, no, refine <laughs> the oil that we, that we mine in our country, in our country. All the byproducts, all the employment that opportunities see, that are involved we'll in our continue in this cycle. You we agree. Know. We so don't, don't have advise us to borrow if we can't re generate the okay, anyway, let us know. It's not, it's not our hot topic today. Austerity we are judge. all tired, sick <laughs> of subsidy. Of so, subsidy matter. Yeah. I'm just sick and tired. I'm and tired. I think Labour, Labour is just being... Um, moving on to Vanguard. It's Friday. We have a celebrity in the building. Let's, let's be nice. Mm -hmm. Outrage as Sunday Boho's house is attacked and two killed. Reps reject lifting of Twitter ban. Mm. PDP governors decry alleged harassment and intimidation. Threats bandits, no, treat bandits, killer headsmen. Others like Kanu, Wige, Otomtel, Buhari. Insecurity Undo orders clamp down on cultists, Okada operators. Don't use extra legal means to handle Kanu, ACF wants federal government. Anchor borrowers, FG disburses 300 billion naira to 3.1 farmers in six years. I think that's 3.1 million farmers. And Siemens to upgrade 22 more transmission substations. Okay, which story are we taking? So they say reps, okay, good. reps reject lifting of the Twitter ban. So um, it was yesterday that this happened. So you remember that a committee had been set up to you know, look into this particular issue of the ban. And um, the committees on information, ICT, intelligence, justice, and orientation were the one asked to investigate the circumstances of the, suspen of the suspension by the federal government. So Shegu um, Odebumi was the one that led this particular committee, and he gave his five recommendations. You know, he talked about how there has to be a resolution when the time for the, um, this ban will be taken off and how to involve stakeholders when, you know, having conversations with Twitter. But the deputy speaker was saying that in setting up this um, com um, committee and having this conversation was the um, national security advisor involved. And he said, well, he particularly their office had sent a representative and that was how far their involvement was. But towards the end, they felt that the committee had not determined the circumstances of the decision by federal government to suspend Twitter. They had not determined the legal authority for the suspension and the duration of the suspension. So they haven't done their job, and they should go back and do a better job, and then they can have time to discuss it. So okay. the ban is still on. So the APC's legal aw legacy awareness and campaign, a voluntary think tank within the ruling party, assessed the Ankobora's program and said that in, in six years, 300 billion were shared to more than 3.1 million yeah. smallholder farmers under the Central Banks and Corporals program. And that's, they, they are saying that this entire program has been underscored by critics. That's what they are saying to the Vanguard reporter. But we, we hear farmers, and I think that we should be sincere, we hear farmers, and we do not see the reflection of the Anchor Boras program in ease, in availability of 
food and drop in prices in Nigeria. This statement also so what, what happened with the anchors? For many who don't understand, the mm -hmm. anchor brought program is such that the, 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 the not even diversify. Mm -hmm. The, the, the country stopped setting goods from being imported by big players. So yeah. we have those big players like the flour mills, the, the, those big guys who import certain produce like yeah. maize. Mm -hmm. What the government now said, don't import those products again. Right. We would empower our farmers we, yes. under the Anchor Brothers program, give them right. money, give them um, um, these um, seedlings and other assistance mm -hmm. to build for capacity. Then you buy from okay. them, yeah. not import again. Yeah. And that's what they've done to help to... Uh, instigate the, this economy of agriculture. Farmers, even we had the president of the My Twelve Market here say, said, uh, farmers are wondering, this money, where is it? Yes. So the are money not does not get to and them, so the seedlings don't get to them, because all of this, the aids and thank grants you. does and not really get to the farmers. And well, so, so this thing because of this insincerity in the distribution, because I know we cannot see the reflection of the east. Is there available corn? Is corn so it's something worth talking about. Because extremely, I know Kebi State's got about 70,000 mm -hmm. farmers came from Kebi State. I mean, this is a report on rice. Rice now, just check online. Local rice is 30,000 naira per bag. We are struggling to sell. Mm. Unfortunately, we can't take any more of that. I really wanted mm. us to get to Daily Sun. There was a story that I really wanted mm. us to take. But is we have to Siemens move on. Story? Yeah, Siemens, you have that story. Yes. Uh -huh. Very so quickly, before Siemens we run Siemens is off. saying that by the end of 2021, they would have successfully moved us from 4,500 4, 4, megawatts to 7,000 megawatts under the agreement that they have with the federal government. The federal government is saying that they are still looking to 24 thousand megawatts with the, with the Siemens deal and they've already disbursed the monies under the federal government and also the um, money for the assistance of the project has also already been approved by the president. What okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we return, move on to the hot topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. You have been at the stage long enough. It's time to become a master and move from noisemaker to newsmakers. The countdown starts now to the most profound global transformation conference of this year, the Mid-Year Crossover Prayer and Prophetic Summit 2021. Hosted by Dr. Chris Okafo, Ministry, Prophet Jeremiah Omotel Fufain, Brother Joshua Iginla, date, June 28 to July 4, 2021. Time, 5 p.m. daily. Thursday and Sunday, time, 7 a.m. Saturday, 3rd of July, partnership impartation. Venue, Grace Nation International, 9 to 12, Oshofisan Street, off Odozi Street, Erike Busta, Odogubega, Lagos, Nigeria. Be uplifted with music by Eben, Joe Price, Gabriel Peters. Don't miss out. For more inquiries, please call. After purchasing uh, the um, Andros uh, land, this is the gift we got, the Ilea gift. I purchased the land and here is the gift item as regards the Ilea Pro. For giving me three rounds, I actually collected one last week. Really I fulfilled the promises I got. I made the purchase and they gave me what they promised I was going to get for it. They are very real and reliable. You can trust them any day, any time. Adron Homes, making the incredible affordable. to join us on this mission yes but how just one question for you how do you keep your toilet clean i use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains i have been using it for years oh madam the regular detergent and bleach are used for washing clothes to disinfect your toilet properly you need hapic 10x it is specially made for germs and stains remover hapic sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach wow I am Funke Akindele Bilo. As a mom, most times we get disturbed or being called for one thing or the other. You know our kids now. And oh, how they love to make us proud. I mean, we love to see our kids happy. 
Their happiness is our happiness. The same happiness we felt when we learned that the original Kellogg's conflicts is here. The world's number one is here. I got an invite to tour the Kellogg's factory. It was amazing. Trust me, we're in good hands. It smells so fresh. Mmm, it's real corn. Mmm, super crunchy, super tasty. <laughs> it's because it's world's number one. on the prompter script check are we set in the pcr all tip in place pcr check clock is ticking time is racing lights are... plans all set 120 minutes of hot entertainment we are ready for the mission Entertainment is an opportunity to share. Entertainment is an opportunity to create community representing. Thanks for staying with us. We heard a story about the fact that mannequins were banned by Hisba. Um, what, what's the word? Kano, in Kano State, yes. Thank you very much, Mara, for reminding me. In Kano State. And we'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Um, especially because they felt it was idolatry. That was, uh, and that was against Islamic injunctions to sell and advertise using those mannequins. What are your thoughts on this? Um, we try to have this conversation because we want to understand each other better. You know, we see things, we hear things from certain areas, and we feel this is different. In our own side of town, it's normal. But maybe it's time for us to have these conversations so that we can better understand each other and respect each other. Send your thoughts. You can call us on 081-270-53687. You can also call us on 0913907. 948, you can send us some messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to read your, um, your messages. So let me start with Nima. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, <laughs> these kind of conversations are always great because as much as there was this uproar in social media, how can they, what is this? this, this, this. Well, you see, we must always bring everybody back to the center, that we are in this country, we are different, we see things differently, and we must appreciate and celebrate our differences. So could you give me a better perspective or give us a better perspective on why do you think mannequins would be against Islamic injunctions? Okay, let me try and understand because Isba is one police that are facing their work very well. So they are <laughs> religious <laughs> um, enforcement police and they are facing their work very well for Kano people. But they don't generally reflect what Islam says. So... In mm. Islam, we don't allow, and not everybody enforces it because it's not a strict rule, per se. Pictures or, or, or statue within our houses is very close on that borderline of, of idolatry that we, we stay clear of. So in my house, for instance, you would never see my wedding picture on the walls, oh. not of my children. Okay. And I do not enforce it in other people's houses that are Muslim. I just don't do it in my house because of my understanding of it in Islam. So there's a saying of the Prophet that you know, when one of the divinations was coming, the angels could not come in because the wife, one of the wives of the Prophet had done a cutting with a picture of um, a, an animal or, or human in, in the house. And so because of that, for those that have deeper reflections in Islam, we don't practice it, but it's not something that you'd expect a police to go up, came in hand to yeah. enforce in the marketplaces because of in Islam, again, one very core part of Islam is intention, declaring, being deliberate yes. about your intention towards what you want to use something for. So if a person clearly wants to use mannequin to sell his market, you mm. know, and it's not in front of your worship places, 
you know, I don't expect a clash. Mm. I don't expect so, this bar to exert so much yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, energy. Yeah, so for me too, I'm not a Muslim. But I have family members who are, and I remember I just called because I'm friends who are Muslims to ask. And they said for them, you know that Islam and just worshipping God is about your intention. Yes. yes, that if you were to buy it for worshipping that mannequin, that's a whole different issue. Matter, yeah. But the intention is to sell their wares. And this and you know, these are changing times. The way businesses used to be done before is not done like that anymore. And Kano, especially Kano State, is like a beacon of um, you know, yeah, a commercial um, the hub next commercial in the north. Yes. Do you understand? So many people go there to do all sorts of businesses. It's supposed to be also um, you know, attracting other people from different states. So mm -hmm. when you put these sort of laws that do, don't seem really thought out, mm -hmm. it, it, it um, affects especially um, medium and small enterprises. And that's the problem. People are saying that they feel that uh, when it comes to the laws that Hizba um, are pushing, is that it goes against people of a certain socioeconomic class. Mm -hmm. so those who are, of, um, who are very rich and do this, mm -hmm. they don't get them for some of these things that they chase, Correct. people who do not have a lot of money for. People are just trying to sell their wares. You know exactly what the intentions of these mannequins are. The only thing I may say is that Maybe there are some mannequins that may be overly... Um, Seductive. Yes. Maybe you can say, tone down those ones. Do not put those ones outside and, and, and sell never, your wares. Or never leave them don't naked. Just, or, always wear something But for they them. are mannequins. But they are mannequins. So they have things on them. Wear them, wear them, wear stuff yeah, on but, them. But let them use them. You understand that it's for selling their market. Let them sell their market. Let them do their business. It's important for people to be um, engaged in business. But, than to well, they, but they're also they're, they're, they're metal mannequins that don't have the body features. So mm. maybe because I, I always believe that when you're in Rome, you act like a Roman. If, mm. you are, if you're in a certain community and you chose to be in that community, understand the That's way so of life. So maybe it's time for us to also come halfway. Okay, yes, the ones that have the body structures are, are allowed in certain areas. But in this area, they only want the wired ones. And there are some wired mannequins that just look like metal. Right. You don't have the real uh, um, body, the features like what we are seeing on, mm. on, 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 on screen. Mm. So maybe we, we, those people who are selling should begin to compromise and, and adjust on this based on, based no, on no, the community no, they're living in. No. You see, uh, I think it's back totally, and I, I see it a lot of times when people are trying to enforce Islamic rules, forget how Islam was spread in the first place. So it's not what we read in the Western books. That's not how Islam was spread. It was in piecemeal, in, by the nature, soft-spoken nature, friendly, accommodating nature of the Prophet Islam that he won the Jews in Medina. He didn't go into Medina with a sword like was... He, they took the sword to defend the minority who asserted Islam, who were being persecuted. Not that, you know, this world, the way, we, and Islam must not forget that history because they are now like the custodian. They're like the mirror. Imagine that, you know, you're educating people rather than enforcing. If in, uh, in, uh, in Kano, Islam and the activities are counterproductive, or just as long, as long as we were reading this, I read a young man who refused to observe Salah because he was being beaten for dressing in a way that wasn't Islamic. Isba is not only enforcing religion, which is a matter of heart, they're also enforcing how you must look, mm. how you must pretend to look. That's why it's, it is a double-sided, they have double standards. In Kano, how many rich people do you find victims of this? It's young, innocent, middle-class people who are struggling to survive, whose basic needs are what they're trying to meet, yeah. that Isba goes around enforcing. I have a problem with the way they go around these things. So a person who has been prayed, the Rasul Sassalam did not just pick a cane and start beating they continued to preach. All the slaves, the captives that you know, they were taken in their defense wars, were kept and they were shown the ways of the Muslim and they fell in love and chose that right, path. Right. That's how the whole of Arabia was taken over. And when you forget that history, you continue to project this Usman Danfodio, Fulanis, mentality, jihadists, all of these things that we read today as the, as the, the, as the, the real history. There are better ways of doing things. All right, so for those people who live in these communities. I mean, I, I, somebody was telling me that when they travel to Dubai, Saudi Arabia, they, see, they are in the malls and they, they see mannequins, mannequins mm -hmm. all over the place. So yeah. sometimes you think and to yourself that, passing. and they, that, can you be holier than the Pope? That, that, that's mm -hmm. what they say, that when you go out in, in, in the world, we see mannequins. So do you think, I mean, and this is just us thinking on our table, that how do they come about these laws? Yes. This, 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 this community, is it like a, the Sharia court declares it, or how does it, somebody just sits in their house and says, mm, let's see, what, who are we going to um, 
clamp down on today. One person's disposition, mm. and that's how the injustice in the world spreads. Mm. One person's bias against a, a minority or a group of persons, with one person with authority's bias, enforced, passed down, it becomes a mentality. So just as we are screaming that you know, jam. And we know they don't have a right to, or these exam bodies don't have a right to tell a, a, a candidate to take off their hijab in such an exam. It's the same thing that is by doing. Some persons, one person's bias against a group of people, and that's where we have a problem. What? In Kano, you can have people do their business. It's just as you go to Dubai and you buy the gold off the hand of a mannequin wearing mm, the watch right. and this. Mm. And you go to Dubai and you see the mannequin wearing the, the abaya and you say, ah, this abaya is very fine without looking any other thing and yeah, thinking any other yeah, wise. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it is. And Kanu has a, is the second most, uh, largest commercial city yeah. in, uh, yes. in mm. Africa. And you have a lot of people in Kanu Market alone. You can get lost with, between the gates yeah, right. of Kanu Market alone. And you're asking people that don't display markets. Yeah. <laughs> Just be shouting, come and buy, come and buy, come and buy. Let me say that. We've got a break. Back. When we come back, we continue this conversation and hear, get callers and hear their thoughts. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Like every mother, I'm worried about dangerous insects, especially mosquitoes, which spread diseases like malaria to my loved ones. This year, I'm not afraid. I'm using New Mortin Instakill. New Mortin Instakill's improved formulation knocks down mosquitoes two times faster. Not even a single mosquito is spared because even one mosquito bite can cause malaria. Mortin Insta knocks down mosquitoes two times faster. Why do we do it? Hide, cover up, tone down. Choose boldness. Celebrate the skin you're in and dress with confidence with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. The triple layered care of deep moisture serum, precious cocoa butter and vitamin E enriches your skin for 48 hours. It's time to show off your best skin. Wear your skin with pride every time with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. Mommy is ready to receive me a bundle of joy. Mommy is making my home cleaner and safer. We are Dettol, Dettol. Sure. Illnesses can happen at home too. That's why Dettol and me together will make my baby's home safe and to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. That's why moms want to be Dettol. Dettol Sure. We are Dettol, Dettol Sure. Heartburn and indigestion? Try Just Eat. My recommendation for the past 26 years, Just Eat. Reliable remedy for heartburn, indigestion, flatulence, and acidity. Ha! Helen Paul! Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, mother, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapix 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapix sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So we'd really like to hear from our callers living in Kanu, especially in that 
Kano environs. Let's hear your thoughts on this uh, ban by Hizba on mannequins and stores. You can call us on 081-270-53687, 091-390-76948. You can also send us messages. We'd like to hear your thoughts. And as I said, our objective of this conversation really is to un have a better understanding of each other. You know, um, We might condemn it from this side of town because for us it's normal. But having a better understanding, that, listen, some might see that as, 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 uh, as worshipping idolatry uh, idols, but you've also helped us understand, Nima, that is the intention that, 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 that God uh, identifies with not mm -hmm. what we actually Let me take this call from Mina. Aisha, are you there? Thanks for calling. You're live. <coughs> Aisha, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Aisha. Morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. I'm a, yes, I'm a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Please, I want to continue. Yes. The reason why they're bad using it, those children in Kano, they will touch the breast, rest of the clothes, they want to see what was inside. Please. Even here in Mina, that is what we are facing. They will raise the clothes, want to check what is inside. They will compare it. They will tell you that ah, you are wearing job, wearing clothes, wherever we are seeing bread on the road. So yes. that is the reason. That is what our children are doing here in North. Yes, sir. I, I, okay. I, I, so so they have your Thank you very much, um, Aisha. Aisha. Dressed up mannequins and they will be lifting up the name. dress. So when that happens, isn't that, that's isn't that, that no, that's yeah. feedback. That's mm -hmm. feedback saying that you need to educate mm -hmm. and teach children. So mm -hmm. when you see kids, because kids will be curious. Exposure. They are children. So ex the exposure, education, understanding that no matter, your, your child will come and touch you. you want to understand, why is your own chest bigger than my chest? And that's an opportunity to Me, educate. that I'm a yeah, human, so, Ijabite. When I carry my friend's kids, even Bisola uh, Yolu's granddaughter had never seen me without the hijab. So when they brought her to my house and she saw me without the hijab, she cried forever. <laughs> she didn't understand. I was playing the normal play. And I understood why. So when I went to their house, she saw me in the hijab. And I was carrying her and then yeah. I took off the hijab mm -hmm. in her presence. Yeah. And I put it back on. I did like three times. And then she adjusted. Oh, yeah. she's the same person. It takes a while. It takes education. I have friends who, are, who their children are Christians. And whenever I visit their house, I remember G-Boy as a child. He would climb on my legs and he would put his hand into my hijab and who my yeah. ears <laughs> and be, just be, to be sure I'm a, a yeah, human. Yeah, human. <laughs> so you take it, you give people time to adjust to things. You don't just react like this. Yes. Now, so the children, don't, that don't, will not stop them yeah. from wondering what is still under if you don't yeah. educate them. Yeah. So I also understand that the culture in the North is that it's very conservative. So conversations, I, I've mentioned it before, con conversations around sex, around bodies, it's not something that they want to do so openly. Mm. It, it shows as if you do not have home training. But I think it is time to start rethinking how we are raising our children. That a child shows curiosity. Does not mean that child is a spoiled child. Does not mean that child has not been brought up properly or something is wrong with the, the child. Age. It's just normal curiosity. And when a child is informed, the child can make better decisions concerning themselves and understand themselves. That is why now we're always talking to our children. We teach them about their body parts so that they understand that this is just mine. And anyone that comes close and tries to touch it, right. you know, we can, they, they know what to do and who to report to. Right. So it's just okay to yeah. have this conversation. So okay, let me take this call from Babatunde from Ikorodu. Good morning, Babatunde. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. You're live. Go ahead, please. Concerning yeah. the mannequin uh, of, of the thing, yeah. to be honest, the, the last caller, she gave a very valid point about these uh, children spending that even some adults do it. But there's a better way of doing things. You can't just come up and say, okay, we are totally banned this thing. I think their responsibility is to deal with those kids. I used to go around bending down and check uh, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen some models, even in UAE, because I've been in UAE for like three, four years. I saw some models, people like from Bangladesh, India, and all that. If they pass, and see money coins, maybe it's looking like a lady or something. Mm -hmm. I tell you, some people will touch it. They even touch it, the, the sign of a, a breast or bending down, looking at what is under the this. But for me, as for me, they can't just say they, they, they are totally banned. Or... Yeah. That's the way they can do it. This man is a responsibility they can do with no children. Instead of disturbing people's business. Right. So, so, Thank you very much, Martin. I'd like to link that to even the Sharia law because mm -hmm. you steal the clutch of your hands. You know, mm -hmm. this is part of these. Um, the kind of the kind of laws no, we have, such that when you steal, there's there, there's no way to help to um, um, to rehabilitate mm -hmm. this person for this bad doing. Mm -hmm. It's just that 
um, so it's not it's not strict to sense so I think of I said it your hands once earlier on on the show. As an Islamic law major myself, I know that this is a justice system, and the first resolve is though is not catch and cut. There mm. has to be prosecution, and one of the core messages of Islam of the Prophet Islam during the enforcement of stealing was find out whether the person is stealing out out of hardship or hunger. So if the person is Push to the wall because of any difficulty. The, the rule of the society is to force a person to that difficulty than the, than the action of that person. Mm -hmm. So if a person is told, like a woman stole to feed her children, and I saw a video of a woman who, who had to take a beating in our own African custom for stealing to feed her children in an uh, African magic one time, and I was wondering why. Because in Islam, that woman has to be provided for. That's what a, a proper Islamic society would do. And the, the, the consequence for such a person would never be cutting off the hand. Yeah. But if it is an habitual, you're a first time, second time, third time offender, right. you're used to this method of stealing, it is then what the, the, the law provides. That's a, that's a different call. justice system. Ebony, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, hello, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, so um, I just want to drop a point or two. This um, ban of a thing, I'm not hearing it. And for me, what the point the first caller made concerning the children, I just personally think the borders of home training and, and exposure. Now, um, like the last caller said, children do it, even adults do it, and it just borders upon training. Now, it's like if a child can think of going and checking on that, uh, you know, a mannequin, put it. So dress or just see what's on that. What says that child is not going to be safe for a human being? A human being, just for curiosity. Because that, this particular point does not bother on the government or, or the security of the child or, or the, on the government. No, no, no. This bothers on home training. But going uh, um, with this attack, fire a um, brigade approach, it's not, it's not normal. It's not right. It's like child trafficking. Children working in school, mm. or uh, uh, um, using your children to sell while they're supposed to be in school. I remember how the state government dealt with that. They started picking up these kids. Now, go to the market. If anybody is caught doing this, whether a child or an adult, hold them up for something. Let them be in penalty. People will talk to their children from right. home. Adults will call themselves. Thank you very much, Ebony, for that. Yes, yeah, Fedma. Yeah. Um, you know, the other caller was saying, that's before her, was saying something about why even in uni, people, especially from Bangladesh, and I've noticed that too, like when I was in Zaria as well, we used to have a lot of people from Palestine, you know, so people that come from conservative countries, they're just, there's a behavior that they have where things like this intrigues them. And they react almost differently from what normal people do. A normal person will just pass, but for them, it intrigues them. And for me, it is time to now look into the way that we're dealing with and we're teaching people about bodies, about their own bodies themselves. So they find, I find that people that come from conservative settings, conservative upbringing, tend to do, don't know how to almost, sometimes don't know how to behave themselves. When they find, you know, when they find nudity, when they find things like mannequins, like these pictures or videos, because you have not been taught, because you have not been exposed, and when I say exposed, I'm not saying throw these things in their face, but that you're educated on it and how to respond and, and how to um, carry yourself around it. And when you see it, how to respect it. If you're not taught all these things, when you see them on the road, you just feel, first of all, you think it's an assault to you. Somebody's trying to tempt you. Somebody's trying to, you know, disrespect you. But if you're brought up in such a way that you're told early on and in, at different stages what this means and how to respect it, then you behave, uh, uh, you know, in a more respectful manner. And things like how the mannequin looks will not be a problem. So now... Many people have said, because I, I, this was very interesting to me, I just wanted to hear what kind of people were saying. And on social media, a lot of them are saying that sometimes those that make up the Hizba police, maybe they need a little more education and exposure. Mm -hmm. Because that, where the level of education and exposure that they may have would affect how, what they think is important and how they carry out those things. Because with more education, with more exposure, you understand and you see different points of view. And so when you see... When it comes to this particular issue, it will, be, it will, it will occur to them that right. people are not doing this just to be un-Islamic. Right. People are not doing this to be um, idolatrous. Right. They are doing this then, for the business of you know, so selling their goods. Let me come goods. to Nima. Nima, where do we therefore draw the line? 
between education, enlightenment, and staying true to the core of Islam. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, one of the things why people understand about Islam is that they try not to go too over modern because mm -hmm. they want to retain that core, that traditional, the, the, the fact that other religions are so expressive and they've, 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 they've modernized into different forms. Islam tried to retain its core. So in the, in the interest of, his, of preserving that core, is that why you think he's by myself? Listen, we don't even want to know the exposure. We don't want that enlightenment. Let us stay as traditional as we are so that we don't lose or water down the essence of Islam. So education doesn't take away the traditions of Islam. I don't know who, who practices the traditions of Islam as much as I do, as educated, as exposed as I am, especially even with what kind of work I do. And you can see I see strictly follow. There are certain areas I will never cross. And then I still live freely. And that's because Islam is a way of life. It's easy things. It's a guide to living. I think ISBA as a police and can government creating ISBA, we're looking for shortcuts to solving long-term problems. Mm. So if you have a societal problem mm. that needs you to focus on your education system in that state, work hard and make sure that every kid on the street is in school. You can take a mannequin to class and let them see it is made of rubber. Mm. You can wear it clothes and see, and you make sure that you teach the children to respect the opposite sex and their bodies and take a time to make sure that is part of your sex education in school. Right. Rather than just tell the market person, don't sell or don't display your words in the most commercial way. Yeah. Because the kid will come and lift up the gown. Yeah. Because that kid who is in the habit of lifting up the gown, if he does not find a rubber to lift it up, it will lift it up a human being. Yeah. Yes. Because you have failed to do the long-term work. Mm. And this is not a work of 10 years. Every child that you see might have that mentality in Kanu. So because of that child, make it your entire educational system plan in part of your curriculum. Mm. That's what is, uh, oh, is what should be thank, focused Thank on. you very much, Duma. Thank you. You hit the nail on the head. Let's move on. I think we have a call. Uwa, are you there? Thanks for calling. I think we lost that we, call. Do we have any we, messages on the message for Iran? Please yeah, go ahead, Nima. Um, right. So, Oronke Odiemi says, well, <laughs> uh, Adedo to Adekoju <laughs> says, where is the law that permits everyone the right to live and do business in any part of the country? Uh, I mean, Ronke Oduyemi yeah. says, this is just a way to chase southerners away from the north. Mm. Saudi Arabia, the origin of Islam, allows mannequin a lot of big shop designers showcase their brands and, and there's no law against them. This is pure hypocrisy. We need to stand against it. Um, okay, so okay. I'm going to Somebody wrap up. Yeah, go ahead. says, um, they should concentrate on fixing the economy and not the mannequin issues. Mm. That they, this is maybe hypocrisy. And I, I've heard I a lot of too. people say that, that there's so many other issues in Kano State that, that, that it would be better if they focus drug all abuse. their energy. Yes, there's focus serious their energy drug on. abuse. Yeah. And the response is certainly enforce a, you know, ensuring proper education yeah, for their right, people. Right. And, you know, you know put, um, regulating certain laws that, you know, are forcing their people into depression and into drug abuse. Okay, so I have to wrap up on this. But I think it's important for us to reiterate that we don't want Nigerians to always take the shortcut in resolving issues or understanding it. They say, oh, it's because we're against this community, they're against that community. Mm -hmm. that, that's the shortest way to just think about it and move on. Yeah. Look at the issue. Let us spread it open and say, let's, let's learn about each other. Let's understand each other. Let us come to a consensus. And that's, what, that's one of the things why we do this show. Let us hear people's views because no matter how different it is, we must respect and understand it. So it's the easiest thing to say, ah, that's what they want. Though. They want to just chase this community. Just but that, that's the easiest thing to do and just move on. We don't want the easy way out. Yeah. We want to take each issue, understand it. And the same thing, we talk about restructuring. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, okay, we're just banning the... No, mm -hmm. no, let's all come to the table. Let's discuss, discuss agree, and understand you, understand me. Understand. And then we come out to a consensus. Yeah. That's the only way we can move forward. So let's say, I mean, I, 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 want, I, I didn't like the tweet I was saying that. Yeah, so I don't want to read to, it. Yes. It, it, it. It's so Nigerian and it's, we have to stop that way of thinking. Exactly. That's, that, that's the truth. Okay, we have to go on a break now. When we come back, our guest is in the building. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Please keep an eye on Jenny. Oh, that's all right. Oh, Uncle Paul, look! I want to be a pilot when I grow up. That's good. I've always wanted to be friends with a pilot. Uncle Paul, what's your job? I help people understand things. Like a teacher? <laughs> Almost. I help explain to mummies and daddies what they can do with their money. I help people build stuff. And I'm always there when they are happy and when they are sad. 
I help people grow all kinds of things. You're a farmer! Not quite. I help people keep and grow their money so later they come back when it's bigger for themselves. You're a magician! <laughs> Just like a pilot, I help people move from where they are to where they want to be. Thank you, Uncle Pilot. <laughs> ARM. Invested in your tomorrow. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapik sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! I am Funke Akindele Bilo. As a mom, most times we get disturbed or being called for one thing or the other. You know our kids now. And oh, how they love to make us proud. I mean, we love to see our kids happy. Their happiness is our happiness. The same happiness we felt when we learned that the original Kellogg's Conflict is here. The world's number one is here. I got an invite to tour the Kellogg's factory. It was amazing. Trust me, we're in good hands. It smells so fresh. Mmm, it's real corn. Mmm, super crunchy, super tasty. <laughs> it's because it's world's number one. Is ready to receive me a bundle of joy. Mommy is making my home cleaner and safer. We are Dettol, Dettol. Illnesses can happen at home too. That's why Dettol and me together will make my baby's home safe and to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. That's why moms want to be Dettol, Dettol Shaw. We are Dettol, Dettol Shaw. No, 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 please, right tomorrow. Happy. It's a dream. So you see this peace of mind that I have? It's because I just finished building my house. <laughs> Roller property. <laughs> Roller property. They are the one that run it. Even though they are running a promo now, you need to go and buy land from them. Outright, they will give you 20% discount. Even if you don't want to pay outright, you can still pay instrumental. You pay instrumental for 24 months. Meanwhile, after all of this goody goody that they have given you, you know, they will still give you RAM when you deposit. They will give you uh, electronic. They will give you full stuff. Yep. I'm even saying too much. I'm saying too much. Go to Roller Property by yourself. Go and find out. Like every mother, I'm worried about dangerous insects, especially mosquitoes, which spread diseases like malaria to my loved ones. This year, I'm not afraid. I'm using New Mortin InstaKill. New Mortin InstaKill's improved formulation knocks down mosquitoes two times faster. Not even a single mosquito is spared because even one mosquito bite can cause malaria. Mortin Insta knocks down mosquitoes two times faster. So joining us on the show is the son of the late symbol of democratic vision, a convener advocacy for One Nigeria Initiative, and a businessman. We have with us Mr. Abdul Latif Kolawali Abiola. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We heard yesterday was your birthday. Yes, yes, yes. So what did you guys do? Anything? I did nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't celebrate birthdays. Oh, really? Ordinarily, I'll be climbing. I normally climb on my birthday. 
Oh, you climb oh, the mountain. Climb. mountain climb. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. my thing. Or you stay with the family at least. But this time, because of the COVID, yeah. there's, no where, there's nowhere to go to. And <laughs> so you no just stayed at home. So I stayed home. But you got plenty of cakes, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, a few. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's so much to talk to you about because there's so many things happening. Uh, we'll talk about your possible ambition probably later. But the, the, the hottest news right now is what happened with um, Sunday Boho um, last night. I think it was Thursday, 1 a.m. 1 a. And um, this is a man that a lot of people believe started this conversation on self-determination. Uh, and um, people saw him as a warlord. Uh, some saw him as somebody who uh, was a leader trying to push a vision. And some saw him as a, as a rebel, you know, somebody that should be arrested. Others say, ah, this is a man who has been very respectful for the elders. He has been able to galvanize support across party lines, across community, uh, monarchs and all that. In your view, what do you think Sunday Bo stands for? And do you think it was right for the federal government to send the DSS to invade his residence yesterday? Well, first, I'm not a politician, so let's get that straight. <laughs> uh, so what I tell you is basically what I think and yeah, first as of I opinion. see it. Now, I think because of the vacuum in leadership, from things that have gone out of hand. Hmm. And when it goes out of hand, it, you end up with a scenario of last night. Uh -huh. And I will start with, with Cannon, for example. You locked the guy up for three years, didn't take him to court, nothing. You turned him into a hero. The guy, what he did was pure treason. Treat it as such and deal with it as such. Immediately. Now, if you want to start dealing with that late hour now by having to attack or supposedly going to arrest the guy and things end up this way, that's what you get. So anything that advocates anything against the state, the union of Nigeria is treason, period. Hmm. And the sooner we start treating such things as such, the better, and deal with them as what they are, treason. Right. A treasonable uh, offense in our constitution, the death penalty. So deal with it and let's get it over with. The more we drag our feet, we will start giving more and more opportunity to such people, such thoughts, such advocates. People right. will say because Push. it's so. a democracy, because we're in a democracy, yeah. there's, a, diff there's yeah. a way to handle this. And so I agree with that. That's why it allows for them to speak their minds and speak their thoughts and... I don't have a problem with speaking your mind. Mm. What you do with what you speak is another thing. What you influence with what you speak is another thing. You have to be responsible for your talk. And if you talk, talk the talk. If you're going to walk the walk, then you must be responsible for it. And that's how I see it. Well, you've not, gone to, you've not answered my question concerning Sunday Boho, which is, so he was, I mean, I wouldn't want to compare him to Kano. No, to it's, it's a trend. Because it's a trend. He, he was, he kind of was saying very clearly secession. He was saying self-determination. Is there a difference, do you think? Or do you think? Anything that breaks Nigeria is the same. Mm. Call it uh, um, um, apples and oranges. Yeah. A, a dog is not a monkey because they all walk on four legs. Two different things. It's still a dog is a dog, a monkey is a monkey. So if, if you start advocating, advocating such things, you're definitely playing with the integrity of Nigeria. Well, I just love, um, this is a big opportunity for me. Thank you. Knowing about your dad and all of that, but this is the first one-on-one -on -one opportunity that I have with you. So I'd love you to educate people who read M.K. Abiola's legacy and think June 12th is all it's about. You know, even if it was about the election, what exactly is your view about his arrest, incarceration, later his death, you know, and the annulment of the elections entirely. What exactly, how do you, what, how do you see it, and you know? MK is, first, I am probably the luckiest man in the room to have such a father, mm. first and foremost. And for, for me, his vision is way ahead of his time. And, and that applies to everything he does, his family, his kids, choice of what business to step into and his impact on people as he grew. And the overriding factor there, and which we, we, I hope we've all learned, I, I've certainly learned it, 
is that you never forget your, where you come from, never forget your past, and that should be your guiding principles going forward. And that's what he has stuck to. Um, he's unique in the sense that he's paid a price for being, like I said, ahead of his time, his foresight. A lot of what he did back then, um, many probably wouldn't understand, but over time, um, it's come to prove that there was some method to the madness. Right. Um, so for me, everything was a natural progression. He's, he's who he is with time. He's made an impact on people's lives with time. He's been pioneered. He's pioneered a lot of things. He's given a lot of opportunity to people. Right. And with that, it was just the next thing to do was right. would be to go into politics, right. I right. guess. Okay. And yeah. he's been a politician all his life, basically, from school. Yeah, oh, that's several other yeah. questions. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, you know, when we tell his story, um, for me, I find that there's sort of like a good ending with his recognition, the mm. recognition of June 12th, you know, the posthumous recognition, right. and the fact that we now have a democracy day that will forever be Thank related you. to him and his yeah. name. How does that make you feel? It's a mixed bag for me. Um, with what he had done and the impact he had made on lives, you would never have thought that it will take forever to recognize his, um, okay. his achievements. Mm. It took us 22 years or so just to get the GSFR. G GCFR. Mm. Why? It's a no-brainer. I thought it, was, it would be a no-brainer. No um, this is a man that had titles in 120 different communities in Nigeria. Never, uh, never won national honor. Never. Never won. And the one national award that he has earned, and Nigerians as a whole have said thank you to him for whatever he had done in the past, took us 22, 21, 22 years to get. It goes to show you that everything about him is, is, is politics. Everything about him, including his, his birth, is complex. Hmm. And it's just the man. It's just what did, he's all about. Did you, did you ever um, hold a grudge against... Former Governor Olusha Gombasanjo for never recognizing your President. father. President, President sorry. <laughs> you want to kill you. For never, for never <laughs> officially recognizing your one. father. I mean, because we, we, we hoped that he would do it, but he never did. And it took even the governor mm. in, the, in the Lagos State at some point to have a whole statue of him. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel? Did you hold any grass against him or you just said, hey, that's, that's, that was his No, gra no, no grudges. Um, if you had done otherwise, I would, I would have been highly impressed. But if you didn't, mm. I'm not surprised. They have a history, and uh, a history from child, from school, and so on. And for me, that's not my business. That's their business. I'm the next right. Right. generation after that. And I don't get involved in whatever yeah. the fathers or, the, or that right. level have. Um, ah, at the time, the elections were annulled. Yeah. So I wonder what, how young you were been and whether you, you understood it enough to object to it at the time. How did you feel during that annulment, knowing that it was alive and his right, I was, I wasn't, that was his right was taken? The best way to answer that question is the fact that I made that election happen. Mm. I was part and parcel of the strategy, the execution. All the jingles you see today had something to do with me the strategy, the execution, and any party member alive today knows the role my little caller then, at what, 28, 29, played to make that day happen. So obviously I would be disappointed. I, I, I created our, with a group the perfect, the most perfect election in Nigeria to date. To date. And to have it, have that whole hope of change and then have it all just annulled in one night. Hmm. For a young person, it's, it's a huge setback. I was given a task by my father. I think I executed it the best possible. We saw the results of that. And then to have that, ex that whole energy fizzled out in, by one national <laughs> announcement, that's one. Two, what happened post? Is another thing entirely, which I think 
Can I continue on July? I'll get, yeah. No, I'll go on a break when we come back from okay. Virginia. Stay All with right. us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Introducing the Save and Win Pali promo. Just save 10,000 Naira or more monthly and stand a chance to win up to 5 million Naira and other exciting prizes in the Save and Win Pali promo. Download the Union Mobile app to open an account or visit the nearest Union Bank branch. Union Bank, your simpler, smarter bank. Will this penalty be the decider? It's going through the player's mind here. You could cut the tension with a knife. Is there one more twist in this long, rocky road to the final? And here's the kick. And he scores! They've taken the win. They're through. Good morning, my boy. There's always the next time. Join the winning team and stream every match with Glow Special Data Plans. For everything Glow, dial star triple seven hash. Great supporters of football. Glow. So we're going down memory lane since we have you with us talking about the elections, what happened after. And talking about what happened after is more of your relationship today with the former uh, dictator, I would say, uh, head of state, Babangida. He's yeah. alive, he's well. And um, sometimes when I see and he goes for neck meetings, I'm thinking to myself, ah, hey, this man, he lived this long. Ah, now, wow, not that I want to kill him, just that you would think that with all that happened, you know how we believe that, ah, God do for you know, but this man is still doing well, and he, and if I was Abiola's son, or I would be thinking, hey, what is, why this man is still up and running? Yeah. In your view, how, what's your relationship with him? And do you feel that he has paid for what he did by annulling that election? Well, I, I don't have a problem with the uh, former president at all, and I, I don't have any grudges, ever. like I said. Events are determined, are predetermined. So it's mm. like, my faith allows to understand that very well. Um, it's up to you to live with your roles going forward. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't wish him bad. Um, are you friends with him? I can't be friends with him. He's my, he's a, he's, it's like a father figure. But yes, I know him very well, and I'm, I relate to him with him very well over the years. Unfortunately, I haven't seen him in a while. I think I spoke to him um, when the award was given. But do you have that deep conversation with him? Have you ever had that, 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 that conversation? That conversation I've always, been very, honest, I've always been very honest with... We've always had very honest discussions. Okay. During the annulment, I had unfettered access to him. Yes. That whole process. And I tried in my own little way to, to bridge the gap. And, okay. and bring the two together, my father himself, some, some level of understanding. I played quite a, quite a bit of role doing that. Um, I taken my dad and I broke at it meetings, I went with my dad and arranged the meetings several times. And one-on-one -on -one with him, I've always been very straight and honest with the former president, and he knows that. And I asked him direct questions. He, he will always answer me directly also. So I, I really never had a problem with, with him, including General Basso during those days. Uh, then General retired, but President yes, now. So people will be listening Everybody. to you. We're not yeah, getting any meeting, Mr. Abiola. No, my own is. No, look, 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 look the, thing is, the thing is that, look, yeah, I, I, am in the, I, was the of, I was in the middle of it all. Yeah. Mm. You had all these forces. My dad, Teo Yaradua, General Basso Joe, IBB, and everybody played. And I was, I was the connection. So okay. I kept, 
no matter what, I kept the connection going. Mm. I was the only way, I was the only one that, I, I, they would listen to me and at least give me that because I think right. I've earned enough of their respect right. from that perspective. So I was that connection. Even when my father was incarcerated, um, general was in jail, the two generals were in jail. I still went and I met with them. I still went and I saw them and I still kept that connection going, believing that the solution would be one of those three people. Mm. And exactly what happened, two left and one inherited yeah. the game. So, You know, some people will be listening to you right yeah. now and because of how it played out, people mm -hmm. took hard camps. And some people forever feel like, oh, this person is against this person and forever I'm against this person. But then to hear you speak, like, you know, it wasn't like that anyway. We're able to still sit together and try to put it was our like, heads It was like together. that, but some of us had to be mature enough to, to not lose our heads and throw the, the baby away with the bathwater. That's the role I played. Some people could, could have interpreted that as you being a traitor, saying that, you, were, you betrayed the trust really. of the, the... Because people believed and thought that you should mean, have taken sides. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me was my, what my father thought my role was mm -hmm. and how I felt I could keep it going. And I had... To, you, you cannot not talk to all the players. And I was the one in the middle of it all. So I had to keep that connection going. I had to keep the flame. And I had to keep it going for the better of everybody. Not just for them, but for the country as a whole. So I'm amazed at yeah. how... Devil led it and how you resorted to dialogue to resolve this issue, able to take in, in, into cognizance every interest rather than lose it all at all. Mm. I wonder if it was the same for your siblings. I remember that you know, following the assassination of Kudra Tabiola, everybody in the country felt such. And I kept wondering if you had children, how would they cope with this now, knowing that their father is, is in incarceration mm -hmm. and now she's dead? She had her own mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. I kept, till date, any time I think about the story, what would have happened to her children? You know, mm -hmm. if now they are grown up, how would they be dealing with that person? Did anybody help them through counseling? Did, anybody, anybody, did the country Is even that, that, try that, to that's, reach out? That's an interesting question there. Look, hmm. I grew up as the first son on both sides of my family. I was very close to my grandfather. He was a Balogun of Ojo in Abakuta. And in my tender age, every meeting we went to, he would tell me to join him. And the elders there would complain. Like, what's this little boy doing in our meeting? And he would tell them, no, Lachi, sit down. And he knows pretty well they can't annoyingly leave because they won't get there by the afternoon and the small change he will give them. So we'll sit. And he will ask me, Kola, what do you, Lati, he calls me Lati, Lati, kilo, kilo, what do you think? And over that, over those years, I've cultivated a lot of my, my sense of purpose and, and maturity. The same thing with my father. No matter what you do, even in those days, uh, what does Kola know about politics? He will say, no, let him speak. And when I speak, he will say, look, he doesn't know much, but what he's saying makes sense. Mm. And I, I believe he, he can't say otherwise. So I've, I, I was... I've, 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 been, I've been through this from day one, hmm. trying to learn that. Now, the beautiful thing, or the ugly bit about it, is that in Nigeria, when the chips are down, it's like in politics, they will say, oh, the forces on the ground. Okay? By the time you look back, there are no forces on the ground where the wireless well starts. Hmm. You are strictly on your own. Hmm. So what happened post is, is you understanding that there are no forces on the ground. Everybody will pack their bags and... What, what, what's the next game in town? Mm, you realize, the politicians. Right. Hmm. If you don't realize that, you'll end up being the one hanging, right. hanging alone. So, okay, we're going to move away from you know, this history yeah. journey in a minute, but I want to know what your relationship is because, you know, Kudur, I'm, I have a very close relationship with Kudurat's I know that. family mm -hmm. and uh, I know Hafsat has been there, mm -hmm. Rabiot Dunli uh, and uh, Jamiu and all that. What has been as the head, you're yeah. obviously the oldest, I mean, mm -hmm. Have you been able to still everybody together as a family one? Mm -hmm. And there have been questions about the legacy MKO left behind. Yeah. Um, he, we, he had numerous companies. And people are saying, ah, whatever what happened to this big legacy that we all grew up you know, to want to be like? So what happened? What are you doing as a leader? Holding first the family together mm -hmm. and then his legacies, his, the, the, the industries those that he built. How mm -hmm. have you been able to hold that together? Um, Fair enough. Driving in here, 
I have this playlist that I call the tribe playlist. And there was a song playing as I was coming in. Um, uh, Tenny, Hustle. So, uh -huh. it's not about read the cooler. Well, well, all of you need to do that very well. Look, <laughs> you see, when you go up against government, you need to be in that shoe to understand. Number one, number two. We talk about Viola Farms, we talk about Concord Press, those are not, those, those companies collectively were not, were not, were not the, how do you put it? They, they didn't lay the golden egg. There was something else laying that golden egg that kept those things running. Those are things that you build over time. And when I came home in 84, 85, it was a mess. I was the one building them and putting them right. And then politics came, and then everything went those times. And then you had to go against the system. Now, with time, you have to learn that if they try to chop off your knees, hmm. do you have to always provide the other bit of your leg for them to chop off? Hmm. You must have other means and ways of making right. a living. There's, 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 there's a time to retreat. Hmm. Hmm. No, no, not retreat. Not retreat. Apart from that, but you do not put yourself and everything you do out there. Yeah. When, when I set up, set up, I help build these things. Wouldn't I want to see them okay. survive? But when you have a government shut you down, even the state government of the day, the political state government of the day, in, in, its, in its own definition of wanting to help Concord, felt they should buy their generators to give them money to help Concord. I wonder what they will do <laughs> and how they will run the place if there's no generators. Is that a way to help? And that's supposed to be a, a, friendly, a friendly government, okay? Mm. Or, a, or a government that is a civilian that takes away my concession. We know the Apache thing is very clear court, but when you have a civilian government that also comes in and takes, takes away your own concession, you would have thought, okay, yes. So it, it didn't just end with the Abachai regime, it continued. Even the civilian. Oh. Even the civilian. And you see, I am the head of a family, and there's so many things I just cannot say. Yeah. So no matter how hard they put their hands in my mouth, my responsibility is first with the family. And there's so many things that I know that could not be said, and can still not be said, and deliberately so. But it'll get to a point that I'll have to. I have my own set of kids now. They're going to have to start having kids. I don't want anybody pointing at my own kids or my grandkids claiming your dad stole anything from, right. from them. So it'll get to a point that I will do that. But I don't think it's something that we can do on this program because right. it will take, I will come with sparks, numbers, and everything to show you that it's certainly not what the perception is. And if I, it's a thing that will take an, at least an hour program, which I'm ready right. to take any right. time, any day. Because I'm getting to that point. I have my own kids. I have my own, my own legacy to build that my own kids yeah. and their own kids might be able to look up to. Right. Yeah. And we're getting to the point that things would have to be said uh, the way they are. But like I said, in summary, there was something else laying the golden egg. egg. Not those businesses. Right. So, but the family so, structure is this And the family now? structure, when that, which you asked, which was the first question, sorry. Yeah. It's not the easiest thing to deal with 50-odd kids and many mothers. But what I've done, I've done to the best I can to accommodate them, even outside of his will, to make it more convenient for everybody to be able to live with it. There's going to be grudges. Doubt. Maybe I made one or two mistakes myself, but how old was I then? The only beauty I had was I had the opportunity to learn from my mom's scenario. My mom passed away before my dad. She was 54 when she passed away. It'll be 30 years this year. And her own estate, our family, gave me some sort of a tutelage in how to deal with the larger world, which was a few years after my, right. before years with my dad. That's number one. Number two, if God had 
God was kind enough for me to give me some breathing space. The years in which my father was incarcerated was the years in which I was able to know friends or no friends. That's, that's, that's friends or no friends. Mm. Even the family understand uncles for what they are, what they are still, <laughs> what they still are. Um, siblings, wives. It gave me time to know, because I left home very early. And being back, that, that incarcerated consolidation period gave me time to know a lot, lot more than I would have known. As opposed to if I just woke up one day and it had gone. So it was basically gone for four years. So that allowed me the opportunity to know, understand, know them for everybody for what I think they are, right. in my definitions. And I'm hardly ever wrong mm. in my <laughs> definitions. That's another right. gift from God. But Okay. You know, so. Yeah. So, um, okay, so here we are now. Yeah. And you know, I, I just wonder if, you know, you, you mentioned that there were some mistakes you may have made mm -hmm. and some things maybe you would have done differently. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering maybe now an opportunity today, is there like any member of the family or any siblings or, you know, cousins to your children that you hope the relationship with a, will be a lot better when you start to talk? Like no, when no, they I've hear never, from I've you. never interfered in the relationship with my co okay. with their cousins, never. So that relationship never, is good. They meet themselves without even me <laughs> knowing, and I've never stopped anybody from meeting. Right, fantastic. I've never interfered with it. I'm not that kind of person. I'd, I'd like to yeah. know what you think about the process that happened every June 12th now. You know, mm -hmm. people come out and think, it's a Abiola's last legacy, and is it the right reflection of, would you, do you think you'd be pleased with several protests we're having today, the agitations around, what exactly would you want to be to to happen every what I, what I want us to do is to learn what I hope I, the role I'll play going forward now is to make sure that that is not just a process a protest but we get results from it and that's why I set up this this uh, this app tribe Niger and the coalition for one Nigeria it's not good enough to always protest and then leave it back to the politicians. And then mm. come election time, it don't ah. make a difference. Okay? What I'm hoping to do is to take the achievements. I've been there. I've done it. 79, I was there as a, as a, as a, as a, as a young, out of secondary school kid, MPN days. 92, 93, STP, I was totally involved. So I know how the system works. And I think I can bring that knowledge to making sure that they get results. What I'm hoping to do with this app is to get us talking about a united Nigeria, to understand that we have a common problem, leadership. We may have uh, little things, the man in Sokoto doesn't have the same problem with me from Obo State, but at the end of the day, it's all about leadership, and we have a common thread going. Let us have that discussion on that platform. Let us come up with our own sol solution, or we think our own solutions are on that platform. And then collectively, let's see how many of us can get there and let's use that strength in power, in numbers, to make a change politically in Nigeria. Right. The system has to be turned on its head. Right. We have to disrupt this whole political system to, to get any headway. All right, let me go on a quick break. I'll find out our last break. When we come back, we take the last leg of this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Entertainment for me, uh, first of all, I say it's a vocation, it's, uh, it's work for me. And
Thanks for staying with us. All right, so I want us to move into 2023. Yes. Last year, we had NSARS, and um, a lot of young people are saying, you know, we're tired. We want a new, ch we want a change. And um, we have the APC, the PDP. Many people are saying they want to be president 2023. Uh, people are thinking, what's our options? What are the options? Are the same? Are we going to uh, recycle the same politicians? In your view, do you think that 2023 is already set? Will they already know who's going to be? Or do we, is there an option for young people to still bring about a new candidate? And is there a possibility for a new direction totally in 2023? Well, I, I, I honestly believe that. Um, for the two parties, maybe they think it's set, but they're, they're not in touch. Um, answer is, look, there, for me, there are three sets of, of voters here. You have the uneducated voter. You have your answer people in the middle who are totally sick and are tired of the system. But unfortunately, they don't know how to, to take it further. They can protest, but they can't take it further. Hmm. And then you have another set on this side that are just total skeptics. They can't see anything good in the political system, and they're giving up on it. And whoever comes with anything uh, to change it, they see it as, oh, this is, this is another game. Now, what I'm hoping to achieve, these guys always vote. Yeah, uh, uneducated. Uh, uh -huh. And they always vote, and they use, they, the guys usually, unfortunately, is, are able to be induced, for lack of a, uh, to use a very kind word. The guys here definitely want that change. They want to see, they're sick of it. There are 51, uh, the 51% of your registered voters are here, these two, All right? Mm. And that's, and that's 18 to like 35 or so. That is good. That's 51% of your registered voters today. If only I can get them to come together under one umbrella, which I hope Tribe Niger will do, All right? Get those guys and then hold them. I've been there before. Let me bring them up to that level. And, who, and uh, any progressive dynamic mind on this side, bring them here and let's move them forward. And well, get so this attention. drive... Yeah. Sorry, okay. one, sorry one, one bit. The, the, once these guys are in, yeah. and I can take them there with this, it will help show these guys that it, this thing can actually work. change. Okay. And then they will join in. And you'll be surprised the difference it will make. Okay, so first of all, there are pictures yeah. of you on the internet with mm -hmm. Hope 2023, uh, and then you're talking of Tribe Niger and mm -hmm. bringing people under one umbrella. Yeah. Is this um, talk okay. about political ambition? Are you running for office? What exactly? Whatever you see out there is total fake news. I am not an APC member. I'm not a card-carrying member at all. I've stayed out of politics because... I, all I wanted to put my energies into was to make sure that my father's election was was recognized. Now that the GCF thing is done, and we have June 12th as a national holiday, which was my objective, we got the bonus of the apology from government, thanks to President Buhari. But my next objective is to make sure that we don't go, we, 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 went, from, we went from the best election this country has had to no, virtually no election at all. That gap I want to fill. And the only way I know how to do it is this. Now, as whether I'm political or not, everything you do is going to be political mm -hmm. in this sphere, in right. this space. Nima, so I to... just want to help people turn this thing on its head and get a lot of us more involved and elected. That's all I'm after. I have some comments on Facebook. Um, yes. Tunde Babatunde said, Babasunde was one of the generals that actually made Babangida to annul the elections. I walked from UI as an undergraduate to go and vote in Monotone in Ibadan. Mm -hmm. And someone just annulled the election. Mm -hmm. This is why we are in this situation today. Exactly. MK would have started a modern Nigeria, but we missed the opportunity. It is a tragedy. Um, Bukola Ogutume says, resemblance between yourself and your dad is so sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. That's because my mom was so loyal. Let me throw in this question to you. <laughs> what he just says. Um, I, I have two questions. You talked about this, bringing everybody into that group. Yeah. But you see, we're so diverse. There's all that issue of... Um, which, which side? That's Whose turn is it? Mm. So, yes, you bring everybody. Can we get a consensus on, 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 on a competence, mm. not on ethnicity or religion? Is that, is that possible? I'd like to hear your thoughts yeah, on the, that. The Niger generation, don't care where you come from. Just be in my ecosystem. 
They don't care whether you're north, south, east, as long as we relate. We are Czechies, we are into fashion, we are into... Yeah. So they don't really, it doesn't matter yeah. to them. They don't see, they, they don't see that bit of it. I, right. I, I grew up never, never seeing a difference. Right. Hmm. I went, I did my NYC in Zaria. I've been, I've traveled since 79. I've traveled everywhere, every place in this Nigeria, by road or by air, and I'm home anywhere I go. So I don't see it any differently. And that Nigeria culture, that's what, Originally, it was designed to be tribe Nigeria. Mm. But we've moved along 10 years in the making. And we have this new Niger ecosystem that is the young, vibrant. They don't really care who right. you are. So, okay, yes, it can be go done. Ahead, go ahead, Mariam. Yeah. I was yeah. going to come to you, Mariam. Just give me one second. You used a phrase mm -hmm. that is not very popular amongst Nigerians. I'd yeah. like to go back to it. You said, thanks to Buhari. Now, a lot of Nigerians don't like to hear that mm. Buhari has done anything good. Mm. And I, I want to hear your insight on Buhari as a person because that people in that group, that educated people, they, are, they just feel like this person yeah. is not listening. Look, he's, look, look. He's, he's on retirement age. He's, he's, he's not probably fit for the kind of Nigeria that we have today. In your view, do you think our president can be better or do you think we, just, we are the ones who don't know, understand this kind of, of leadership? Well. Is it about to go slow? Look, the, the, the fact is this. We've inherited a system from independence mm. that only allows us to pick from two candidates. So what we end up doing over the years is to pick the best of the worst. Mm. That's what we've had. And that's what we get, period. If we had our way, would we, would we elect the, the, the guys that we have today? We won't, but mm. that the system just brings them up. So we have to pick from right. what's available. So I'm hoping that we change that. Right. We change that by having a say as to who we want. The governors, the, the ex-presidents, all think they have to a right to appoint who should lead us. Why? Why? Like they perform themselves, they didn't. But they still think they, they have a right to do that. We have to change all that. We have, to, we have to bring down the barriers to entry. We have to bring down the cost of politicking in Nigeria. And I hope with this platform we will do that. So, and that's so, the beginning so, of a change. Point. Is so, is that the tribe, so, yeah. so is that the tribe night? Is that the um, job of tribe Niger? Is tribe yeah. Niger coming to create political parties, sponsor um, look, people going into politics? Just, What's exactly? Look, if, just if, if, we, if we get critical mass, and that discussion is out there on the, on the platform, and they decide that's the way to go, that's the way we will go. Hmm. It's a collective thing. We all have to cut our skin in the game in this one. Martin, the Ola Dimeji says, Ola Juhulo says, election is in the evil contra contraption is fraud. How can millions of people be elected, be elected, selected few political exactly. criminals every four years to dehumanize and oppress them in the name of election? So, mm -hmm. is agreeing with the two candidates? Okay, Let's so we, we have to wrap up soon, but everybody's talking about that. We are at the point where everybody's talking about restructuring. The yeah. truth, they're saying that we cannot continue with this constitution that put us together. In your view, do you think, I know many people agree on restructuring. Some are calling it self-determination. Some are saying, let us have um, regional autonomy and all that. What do you think, in your own personal view, is the right way? And how do we upturn what we have? Or how do we fix what we have to make it work? Two, two quick ones, since we're out of time. The so-called leaders that are saying all this, they are the most, they are the biggest beneficiaries and beneficiaries of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria made them what they are today. Their names are out there because of Nigeria. Education, wealth, name it, they, they, the, they profited from Nigeria. So why do you want to change it for us? Who are you to tell us that it has to change for us? Let us be the one to decide how we want to change it ourselves. Enough of you trying to be what you are not. Because if you had done it right in the first, in the place, first place, we won't be where we are today. We will not be where we are today. We won't be talking about these issues. If we, if we had an election that was so perfect, that was a Muslim Muslim ticket, voted for across Nigeria, would we still be talking about restructuring, uh, separation, and all these things today? No. So they have no right to be telling 70% of the population that you have to change things when you profited from it and you destroyed it yourself because you didn't provide leadership. That's number one. Okay. Number two, let us be the one to decide how we want to go now. We leave. I went to a school that they, make, they guard kids right in my classroom. Hmm. Now, 
it's not like that again. Why? My, you can't have a, a degree here. 30 years ago, I, used to, I went to school in America. All my colleagues or, or my classmates, we meet in London on Bursary. This is not rocket. It's not like a hundred years ago. So quit deciding how we, 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 we do things. Let us get ourselves elected, that generation elected, and let's go and see how we can do it better. They are expired. They, they don't know they, if they understood it. We would so be saying the people there be... shouldn't be talking about restructuring. It's not for them to tell us. So we get in there first, and if then we, we're if we fall into issues. that trap, then they're going to continue to profit from it again. Hmm. That's they're going to, continue, that's to fall, they're they're going to continue to exploit it again. Mm -hmm. It's for their own good, not for uh, the collective good. Mm. Let's understand that. Before we resign, hmm. hmm. let me be sure I understand. Well, look, we're, we're diverse. Even within the groups, we're diverse. In Ogu State, we're diverse. Ah. We all speak Yoruba. You're either Jebu or your uh, Egbado uh, or your Egba. If that doesn't work, uh, he's Muslim, he's Christian. If that doesn't work, uh, Owuni, Konche, Bagura. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that how you want to run a country? How, how do you have any tell of it? Further divide it's further dividing and exploiting. That's, mm -hmm. why, that's where we are. And it's their fault. Let us, let us understand that. See it for exactly what it is. They enjoyed this country. My father made his wealth from this country because it was a developing country. If they had done it right, as opposed to telling us that we have all this money, but we don't know how to do it. How to spend the, it. The, the, the go out at gym and all that. If they, if they have done, we started with countries at the same time. Now we'll see where they are today. We'll see where we are. Please. Okay, I think we can wrap up on this. Yeah. If you keep your comments on Facebook, and we run up. Bill Key says, some people will find it hard to believe that Kola Abiola shares this view of one Nigeria. Hatred can't get us anywhere. He has to see beyond the injustice done to his father. We forgive and move on. Okay, I'm not fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not fine. okay that's thank it. you very much, sir. Thank you. We have to wrap up. Is there any final words you want to give to Nigerians? Yes. Like they say, if you like this, hit the <laughs> subscribe button. button. Yeah. Uh, Tribe Nigeria, Google Play. Are you using us to Google market? Google <laughs> Play. Uh, Apple, iOS, App Store. I see a scar on your head. You. Could you tell us about that? Well, that was from primary school. Oh, what uh, happened? I was in naughty primary school, like, playing the monkey bars. Since primary school, how many years yeah, ago? Jesus, and it's still God. there. It's still there. Oh my goodness, you must have been naughty. Uh, can't go to my mom, I'm a good boy now. <laughs> <laughs> if I right. my way, I'm There's one thing naughty. I noticed that you talk your, about your father in the present tense a lot. Yeah, he hasn't left. he's my mentor. He hasn't left, he hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah, uh, still, oh. in my, I, was, I was like his um, house boy, batsman. Yeah. So we always, he couldn't yeah, function without me, so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All righty. So I have to run off. So there was a question I wanted to ask you, a personal question for my mother to you. Well. Yeah. Just what my mother knows that I've asked him. Mm -hmm. He will answer me after the show. <laughs> <laughs> See you Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Thanks guys. Clock is ticking, time is racing, lights are. Plans all set, 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked, and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. 
around and get inside. Or maybe I better cool down. Cool down for Jesus. Wait in. In Nollywood, we know how to give a good shout. What have you arranged myself for? Because if we don't, you just won't get it. Take it away. Be kidding us. One day, snake will kiss you and will bite you. Don't worry. That's the way it should be. Oh, yeah. Shouting is fun when it's dramatic. Now you can catch up with your favorite programs on TVC. Log on to www.youtube.com forward slash TVC Entertainment. Join the fun. How we're doing, guys? Is the makeup in progress? Makeup? Check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script. Check. Are we set in the VCR? All team in place? VCR. Check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights are... Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. Looking for some drama? Yes. And catch up with the slaps. Ow! Yeah, lots of slap. <laughs> the drama is endless on TVC. Entertainment is life. That bit of life that makes life bearable, that makes it fun. Um...